dangerous and lethal strains of the coronavirus are spreading across the globe, overwhelming healthcare systems. Some are close to collapse. WHO has warned that the COVID-19 virus continues to change. So far, four variants of concern have emerged, and there will be more as long as the virus continues to spread. As the worst case scenario, the British Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies fears a potential future variant could be far more deadly than existing ones. They could even evade current vaccines one day. It appears the total eradication of the virus will be unlikely. But how can we live with its constant mutation? Welcome to your COVID-19 special here on DW. I'm Janelle Dumalaon. Over the past few weeks, Indonesia became the epicenter of the pandemic in Asia, at one point peaking at more than 50,000 cases per day. While the worst seems to have passed, case numbers remain very high. And Indonesia's health ministry says the number of COVID infections among fully vaccinated medical workers in the capital, Jakarta, has been rising, with most of them catching the Delta variant. Our reporter Rizky Putra sent us the story. Getting into her COVID protective gear takes some time and more than a little courage. But Nurse DeSanti is just glad to have equipment available. Right after graduating from nursing school last year, she was sent to the front line of the pandemic in Jakarta and became infected herself. A few months after she recovered, the second wave hit the country. We used stretchers, wheelchairs. We even had to rotate the oxygen bottles for patients in the emergency room. And they kept coming and coming, even after we were out of beds and oxygen. Those who came had low oxygen levels. I was overwhelmed. The intensive care unit at this hospital is still at full capacity even though case numbers in the capital have been decreasing. Officially, COVID has claimed more than 100,000 lives in Indonesia, with many health workers among the victims. They've mostly been given the Chinese Sinovac vaccine. Now, medical staff like Dr Puspita are getting a booster shot of Moderna to better protect them. I'm really tired. This is just me, but when there are a lot of cases, I start talking to myself. This is insane. I have to work with COVID-19 cases over and over. I often feel like crying, but then I realize I'm not alone. My colleagues are also working hard. Doctors and nurses fully support the strict lockdown measures that the Indonesian government has enforced to flatten the curve. In Jakarta, roads have even been blocked to reduce mobility. Only those with the proper papers, like health workers, are allowed to pass. For weeks, Jakarta's big shopping malls remain closed, except for supermarkets. The malls will reopen in late August, but only to people with vaccination certificates. A trial program has already started. According to data from Jakarta State Hospitals, the mortality rate during this second wave has been almost four times higher for the unvaccinated than for those with two shots. Please get the vaccine while you can get free access. Whatever vaccine it is, take it, because it helps us fight the virus. Please obey health protocols and put your mask on. There are still many people out there who do not wear their mask correctly. DeSanti's family are very proud of their daughter. They belong to the 18% of the population who have had one dose of the vaccine. Only 8% are fully vaccinated. And while the rate of infections may be falling in Jakarta, the Delta variant is now threatening Indonesia's poorly equipped regions. 
We're now joined by Penny Moore, a virologist at the University of the Witwatersrand and the South African National Institute for Communicable Diseases. She is speaking to us from Johannesburg. Welcome to the program. First off, we've now become familiar with vaccinated people being hit by the Delta variant. How well do vaccines work against the variant? Uh, they, they work fairly well against the variant. Um, it depends how you define protection and to some extent it depends on the on the vaccine. The bottom line is that all the vaccines that we have do provide protection against Delta, but it is slightly reduced protection, for example, compared to what we would have seen against the original variant or against Alpha. It also depends how you define protection. All the vaccines do a very good job um, at preventing hospitalization and death, and probably that's the most important thing to think about from a public health perspective. Protection from infection is a slightly more nuanced issue. Now, we were told that the more we vaccinate, the closer we get to herd immunity. But since Delta can break through despite vaccination, what kind of impact has Delta had on our expectations of herd immunity? Yeah, Delta, unfortunately, Delta, because of its incredibly higher transmissibility compared to previous variants, is a whole new challenge for us. Uh, it is fortunately susceptible to antibodies, both those triggered by previous infection and those triggered by vaccines. Um, but it's it's complicated because the um, higher rate of transmission means that you're balancing these two things. So, so although um, we can get vaccines out and we can get as many people vaccinated as possible, we are facing this huge force of infection. In South Africa, where I'm based, um, the entire epidemic now is um, virtually only Delta in South Africa. Um, so I think that's testament and it's another example of several countries where, where Delta has come to dominate. But I think it's important to understand that um, the vaccines do prevent infection, do prevent hospitalization. And even in the case of breakthrough infections, the severity of the illness caused by the Delta variant is reduced in vaccinated individuals. And the rate at which they transmit, transmit the virus to other individuals is also reduced. So is there a case for booster vaccines to reduce the number of symptomatic cases among vaccinated people? This is a, a major question in the field. Um, to my mind, it's, um, it's, it's certain that at some point we will require boosters. Um, at some point in the future, all of us, regardless of the vaccine that we've been um, vaccinated with, we will require boosters. But the question is really when that will be and what that booster will look like. At this stage, we're only beginning now to get a sense of what the correlative protection is. Um, and what I mean by that is we're only beginning to understand how much antibody is enough um, to consider a person or a population protected. And we really need more information about that. And it will also depend to some extent on what the variants are that continue to emerge, because they will continue to emerge. Now, speaking of that, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are wondering what comes after Delta. What do we know about the Lambda variant? Yeah, the Lambda variant um, was in the news quite a lot um, recently. It, it very much dominated the epidemic in Peru um, and a few other South American countries. It does show some uh, evidence of increased resistance to neutralizing antibodies. So it has some of the same or similar mutations to what we're used to seeing in variants of concern that make these variants um, able mm -hmm. to evade the immune system. It also shows some um, evidence of increased transmissibility. But I think it's important to point out that um, I don't think there's, to my knowledge, there's not an example of a place where right. Delta is present being outcompeted by Lambda. Thank you. Penny Moore, a virologist at Wits University and the National Institute for Communicable Disease. She spoke to us from Johannesburg. Thank you. Now to an interesting question on the Delta variant. One for our science correspondent, Derek Williams, to answer. What makes people with the Delta variant so much more contagious? In trying to answer this, I think that we first need to go back to a term that once got a lot of airtime, but that many of you have probably since forgotten. And, and that's the basic reproduction number of a pathogen, or it's R0. Now, the R0 describes the average number of people that an infected person will infect in turn in an unexposed, unvaccinated population. Uh, when it first hit, the ancestral coronavirus had an R0 of around two to three. So each infected person on average infected two to three others. 
but the original virus has since mutated into a range of variants, among them the Delta variant, and, and it's a lot more transmissible with an R0 that's estimated to be twice as high or, or maybe even higher. Of course, a lot more people are now largely immune to the virus due to vaccination or, or previous infection. So each new Delta patient isn't actually infecting twice as many others, but still people who get the Delta variant are a lot more contagious than those who have other variants of the virus. So what exactly has raised the R0 in the Delta variant? Well, researchers think that two changes in particular are probably behind its increased transmissibility. The first involves a set of mutations that they say have altered the structure of the spikes that dot the outer surface of the virus. Uh, the spikes are what allow the virus to latch on to receptors on a cell's outer membrane and break into it. And, and scientists believe that changes to the Delta variant spikes have made that break-in process easier. The second change involves how much of the virus is being produced by cells. Uh, one study found that Delta variant patients had viral loads that were around a thousand times higher than what's found in those infected with the original virus, with that massive replication also possibly happening a lot faster. All of those factors, scientists think, are contributors to making the Delta variant one of the most infectious respiratory diseases out there. 